Then as we continue along on the left here in the buttons, the next one over is length, and the length is adjusting the sequence length of whatever the last selected pad is. So it doesn't quite make sense in this context. So what I'm going to do is jump ahead all the way over here to the left with collapse, and what you get with collapse is a way to take an entire row of active sequences and it copies them all together into the first uh, sequence in that row and then it uh, you know, turns off the state of all of these and leaves just this first one enabled. So what you get as a result is no change in the sound but then the sequence pattern has now been moved down to a single button which is very handy. That way you can switch between variations in that row without having to duplicate entire patterns into different locations. So. I tend to prefer to work this way and make a sequence of a row very quick and then collapse it down to the first location and then copy and paste it out for variations on it. So um, let's show that. So what I'm going to do here is collapse all of these active rows in uh, pattern one here, which is with one I'm on, and then I'll start making variations of them. So collapse.
So that's a basic example of sequencing with the various note parts and the idea is really to try to stay off looking at the screen altogether and just using the device. So any comments, welcome on that. The other uh, way to use it is really with, once, as I mentioned earlier, is the note grid and things like that. So uh, all of these notes options, you'll see some with a bunch of scales that just map, map you to a certain uh, mode in C and there's a global transpose. And then there's all these note grids as well, which I tend to favor. Uh, because they uh, kind of leave you open to a lot of different options. Not all of them contain all 128 MIDI notes, uh, but still they're sort of fun and musical, I find. So I'm just going to use this note grid 5-7, which is one of my favorites, and I'm going to select uh, a synth to route to instead of uh, the impulse. So what I'm going to do is pick uh, one of their default things here, um, and like um, Simpler and maybe like a sawtooth. There we go. And so now we've switched the preset over here on the monochrome, so we're now sending out notes. So that's a basic example. You could of course route this to um, a variety of different things and on the OS X version you can actually route it uh, using the IAC bus so you can actually control say Ableton Live with this. Another thing that Monochrome is good at is you can route MIDI to it and then you will see those MIDI notes. So for instance, just as a really simple example, if I just um, drew some MIDI in here you will uh, see it light up on the device. So, for instance, with the chromatic preset, it's very easy to make animation sequences here that will easily sync to the beat of the music that you're doing, which can maybe be useful for something looking fancy on stage, at least. So that's sort of the basics of monochrome, and any questions is welcome. I can do more videos.